Welcome to Active, Activities and Extended Videos. This research was funded by the IARPA DIVA program. In DIVA, we are trying to help people like this. They have a mountain of security camera footage to watch, but limited human eyeballs. The video might be coming in in real time or forensic data, but either way, the problem is the same. Over the past several decades, we have created capabilities to go through many hours of video and automatically extract objects of interest. This is immensely valuable, However, sometimes objects aren't the things we're interested in. Here we have a blue pickup truck, but the important thing is that people are pulling and carrying things to the truck. They open the trunk, load things into the trunk, close the trunk, and then enter the vehicle and drive it away. In Diva and the active leaderboard that we will discuss today, the objects of interest are not objects, but the activities that those objects are doing. We've created resources to help with the creation of activity detectors. The MAVA dataset is over half a terabyte of security camera footage collected in Indiana at the Muscatatuck Urban Training Center. Here we have a population of actors who were instructed to perform activities of varying types, indoors, outdoors, during the day, at night, in crowds, alone. The video includes IR data as well as human visual spectrum data. It was collected across a facility that included bus stations, subway stations, parking lots, and a school with multiple indoor locations. And we used video footage from a drone that we flew around the facility in order to create a 3D model. All of this data is available at mavadata.org. You can download it today, and you can also contribute by annotating some of the data for activities. All of the released video has been annotated for 37 activity types. These are the 37 activities, and you can see they include fairly mundane activities as well as abandoned package and theft, which were only possible because all of the humans in the videos are actors, so they could be instructed to do these more rare events. A sequestered portion of MABA is being used as the test data for the active leaderboard, which NIST will talk about in a few minutes. So if this is your mission, or this is the mission that you're trying to solve, don't despair. Diva, MABA, and Active are here to help. In this presentation, I'm presenting the results of the active SDL task, which was run under the Activity Net Workshop. This work is a collaboration with IARPA and Kitware. An active SDL stands for Activities in Extended Video Sequestered Data Leaderboard. Please pause the video and read the disclaimer on the slide. In this slide, I am presenting the outline of the talk. I will give an overview of Active, then describe the Active SDL task under Activity Net Workshop. Then I will describe the task and the performance measures used. And then I'll talk about the data sets used in the evaluation. Finally, I'll present the result on the evaluation. I will now give an overview of Active. ACTIVE stands for Activities in Extended Video, which is an evaluation series that we have been working on since 2017. ACTIVE is a series of evaluation to accelerate the development of robust multi-camera automatic activity detection algorithms for both forensic and real-time alerting applications. Here are some video examples that show some of the activities that we are currently using for the ACTIVE SDL task. The view from a single camera is finite and easily affected by occlusion and clutter from other objects. In order to monitor a large area, multi cameras have to be used. The goal of this evaluation is to advance the performance of activity detection systems on multi camera videos, such as public safety. The challenge that we are running are based on multi camera videos and involve temporal and spatio temporal localization of activities. This is a collaborative effort between NIST, IARPA, and Kitware. We, NIST, developed the active series to support the metrology need for IARPA's DIVA program, and the data set were collected and annotated by Kitware. Here we are presenting the timeline of the active series of evaluation. It started in 2017 with the 1A evaluation, and currently we are running two evaluations. The active SDL, which is based on the sequestered MEVA test 3 dataset, which includes 37, 37 activities, 
and has 140 hours of test video. The other evaluation that we are running is the TrackFit Active Evaluation, which is based on the Virat B1 and B2 data set with 37 activities. In this presentation, we are focusing on the Active SDL evaluation. The target application for the active series of evaluation include both forensic and real-time alerting applications. We have two different types of evaluations, self-reported and independent. For self-reported evaluations, the performers run their system on their hardware and submit the system output for, to the NIST scoring server. For the independent evaluations, the performers submit the runnable system to NIST. NIST runs the system on sequestered data using NIST hardware and then posts the result on the leaderboard. The active SDL is a sequestered evaluation. And the sequestered evaluation is based on the algorithm to data paradigm. The main advantages of sequestered evaluation is that it supports large scale evaluation on large amount of data or big data where all the teams run on the same hardware. It allows for evaluation on data with restrictions such as data with privacy concerns, term of use or sensitive data. It also is possible to reuse data with sequestered evaluation and it also reduces the chance of cheating. It also allows repro reproducibility of results. It's also possible to test for streaming and real time systems and to measure timing information. In the next few slides, I'll present the active task and the performance measures. The evaluation task is activity detection. And the activity definition for this evaluation is one or more people performing a specified moment or interacting with an object or group of objects, which includes driving. The activity detection task is given a target activity. A system automatically detects its presence and then temporarily localizes all the instances of the activity in the videos. For, uh, for it to be a correct, detect the temporal overlap between the reference and the system output must fall within a, within a minimum requirement. And um, the system output includes, besides the temporal location of the activity, should also include the confidence score. This slide shows a summary of performance metric calculation. The scoring calculations can be divided into four steps, given a reference annotation and a system output. The step one is aligning the reference activity instances with each relevant system instance. Step two is computing the detection confusion matrix. Step three is computing the summary performance matrix. And step four is visualizing the results such as the debt curve as shown in the right figure. The primary matrix is NAUDC, which stands for normalized partial area under the debt curve. On the SDL website, please see the evaluation plans for more details. The other reported metrics are real-time speed factor and time-limited scoring, which is only reported for systems which are slower than real-time. I will now talk about the active SDL datasets. The SDL evaluation is based on the MEVA multi-view extended video with activities data set, which was collected by Kitware. The data set consists of synchronized multi-camera videos to cover a large area set. It includes video for both indoor and outdoor scenes during night and day. It's captured by EO and IR sensors. There were over 100 actors performing different activities in different scenes. The data was collected by Kitware for the IRPA DIVA program. And uh, the main purpose was to support the activity detection in the DIVA program for multi-camera environments. And we also provide access to the broader research community to use the data sets for other applications. The 37 activities for the MEVA test three are shown in the table. The activities could be broadly categorized as person or multi-person activities, person-object interaction, 
vehicle activities and person vehicle interaction. We are showing the MEVA known facility release videos. Here we are randomly showing videos selected from the KF1 ground camera clips. In the following slides, I will present the results and analysis of the active STL task. This table shows the active STL participants ranking. The results are for the submission deadline of May 17th. We had a total of 40 submissions from 10 organizations and from two different countries. The table describes the team and their NAUDC results, and the results are the best per team. Highest performance on activity detection is by UCF with NAUDC of 37%, followed by INF NAUDC of 39%. Here in the plot, we show the ranking of system performance. The x-axis is the 10 teams and the y-axis is the metric NAUDC. The black point indicates a mean value for each team and the green error bar indicate the standard deviation. The green points show the value of the 37 different activities for each team. Here we are showing the ranking of the teams on the relative runtime. The x-axis shows the 10 teams and y-axis is the relative processing time. The figure shows the system performance by submission days for all the teams. The x-axis shows the submission days since 19-0701 and y-axis shows the partial AUDC. It shows a large improvement in system performance over time from the start of active STL 19 which was based on the MEVA test 2 dataset and uh, compared to the active STL 20, which uh, was run for this task, is based on the MEVA test 3. The plot shows the ranking of activities across systems. The X axis is the activity type and the Y axis is the metric NAUDC. The point marked in black indicates a mean value across different systems, and the green error bar indicates its standard deviation. The green or orange points show the value of the 10 systems. In this plot, we show which activities are easier or difficult to de detect for each team and for the average. The x-axis shows the team name and the average activity ranking. The y-axis shows the 37 activities, and the number in the matrix show the ranking of 37 activities per system. In this slide, we are presenting the summary. For the active STL evaluation, the person abandons package and person steals object are difficult activities to detect across system. Based on the previous slide, we observe remarkable performance improvement of submitted systems over the SDL challenge from the active SDL 19 to active SDL 20, which is this task. Based on the SDL submission deadline of May 17th of this year, we invited the top three teams and the teams are UCF, University of Central Florida and United States, CMU, Carnegie Mellon University in United States, VUS OPPO Research Institute in China. Next, I will discuss the ongoing evaluation and present the next steps. The active STL is an ongoing evaluation. The supported active evaluations are going to be, the STL will be ongoing through spring 2022, TrackBit Active, which is a take home Evaluation will go through 2022. The supported technology growth will be, in 2021, we will add one more task, the SDL ad hoc activity definition and detection task. For the ad hoc activity task, at test time, we will provide an activity definition and some sample examples to the system. And without the developer in the loop, the computation task is to detect if and when the ad hoc activity occurs. 
In 2021, we will add an STL unknown facility testing task, which will be based on the complete sequestered data. I would like to thank you for looking at the video. And in the remaining video, we have three more talks. The talks are by UCF, CMU, and VUS. If you have any questions, please send us an email. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Yogesh Rawat uh, from University of Central Florida. I'm an assistant professor here and today I'll talk about uh, the MEMA system we have developed here. We call it Gabriela. In our team we have uh, Professor Mubarak Shah, we have PhD students uh, Rizvi, Praveen, Ayush, Kevin, Ood and Ishan. The problem is uh, we have untrimmed security videos and we have to detect activities. The activities can be uh, in human as well as vehicle and they can be indoors as, as well as outdoors. The activities can have just single actors or they can have multiple actors where they are interacting with each other. There can be actor object interactions as well. And what we have to do is we have to detect the spatio-temporal localization which includes uh, the start and end timing of those activities and we also need spatial extent where these, uh, where these activities are happening in the uh, video frame however uh, the evaluation is not done on, um, on the spatial extent. There are several challenges uh, in this problem. First of all uh, we have untrimmed videos and there can be multiple activities happening at the same time step. And these activities can be of varying length, some are very short and some are very long. Uh, there can be multiple actors taking part in the same instance of the activity. There can be interactions such as there can be uh, actor object interaction. For example, if a person is opening a car door, then he's he or she is interacting with the door. We can have actor actor interaction. So these are like activities where we have multiple actors. For example, in this scenario, where a person is purchasing something, so these two uh, are interacting with each other. Uh, since these are surveillance cameras, uh, we will have multiple streams of activities, and some of the activities which are far away from the camera will be very tiny and hard to see. So here is one sample which shows like some of the activities happening in the foreground, like close to the camera, and we have some activities very far away from the camera, very hard to see. And the data set uh, is very unbalanced. We have some activities uh, for which we have very few samples. So this shows the uh, distribution of uh, the activities in the data set. Now, most of the existing work which focus on activity detection, uh, they're based on region proposal approach. The issue with region proposals is that uh, performing or Extracting these proposals for every frame in the video that's uh, too uh, memory uh, intensive and you will have scaling issues. The main concern is if you have multiple actors taking part in the same activity, then how will we pair those actors to the activity? So that's a uh, non trivial thing. The other approach is using object detection. We can perform uh, this detection on every frame of the video. Which will, take a lot, uh, which will take a lot of time, it's time consuming, and again the same issue, if you have multiple actors taking part in the same activity, then how many and which actors will be considered to classify that activity. To address uh, some of these issues, uh, we propose a two-stage process. What we do is we take long untrimmed videos and detect activity duplets directly from the video. And then these detected duplets are then classified for the activities present in those duplets. We have a encoder decoder based architecture uh, which directly take video as input and directly detect uh, for the code video. So we don't have to do any region proposal. 
again, since we are taking the full BD as input, we will have video level detection and we are not performing any object detection on frame level and we directly operate on RGB videos and we don't have to compute any optical currents. So this is uh, an overview of uh, the architecture uh, which we have. I will uh, walk through like each component of this. So what we do is we take the untrimmed video, we divide that into smaller clips and then each clip is passed to a localization network which has like an encoder decoder architecture. We do have clip connections and feature parameters as well as active convolutions to make this more efficient and to make the activity qubit localization in videos feasible we propose a multi-layer patch type slot. I will uh, go through this uh, in detail. So the issue with directly detecting the activities in video is that we'll have lots of background pixels and we'll have very few foreground pixels which are part of activity. So dice loss is one way to resolve this issue which tries to balance uh, the pixelized classification and it tries to balance like the foreground as well as the background region in the frame. But the issue is uh, since we can have multiple activities present at the same time, so the activities which are far away from the camera which are very tiny, those will be totally ignored even if we use the dry slot because some of the activities which are in the foreground they will be too big and both of them will be part of the foreground. So to resolve this issue, uh, we propose a patch based uh, dice slot. This is the normal formulation of a generalized dice slot. What we do is instead of taking the full frame, we extract patches and then compute dice slots from those patches. To make this uh, loss more efficient, what we do is we extract patches at multiple scales. So right now we are using three different scales. And these are like uh, three plus three, five plus five, and seven plus seven. We combine all these three scales together and we assign like equal weights to all these three terms to compute the loss. Now using this network, uh, we get a foreground background detection for the input clip. And these foreground regions detect the, uh, represent the activity qubits. Here we have some uh, sample examples. So here we can see that, oh, sorry. So if we play this, so the car is moving around. So that's like our activity qubit, which we detect. We have here, so if you have multiple uh, instances of the activities or multiple activities, we can see that we can detect multiple qubits at the same time. This is another sample where we have uh, humans instead of vehicles. Something coming up, so we can detect the activities in form of qubits. And since these are performed directly on video level, so this is more efficient than performing object detection at each frame. Now with this uh, foreground background mask, what we do is we extract these activity qubits and then these activity qubits are passed to a uh, action classifier which assign activity scores to each of these qubits. Now to get final detection, since some of the activities will be very long, some of them will be very short, we have proposed a TNAP algorithm with like four possible step which tries to connect these uh, activity qubits together and the way it does is if, if the activities are uh, if the qubits belong to the same activity, then it tries to merge those. And if we have a single qubit in which we have multiple activities, so in that case, it tries to split it. And finally, we get like these detections where like each cube is an activity instance. And this can be used for evaluation. So that was our uh, full architecture. Now I will briefly cover like the real time system we have developed, which uses that architecture to like to run in real time. So the system takes the uh, set of videos and we have a main process which actually manages uh, all the GPU pets. It also performs task distribution and we have four uh, GPUs. So the main process uh, actually initializes the, uh, the models and it distributes like all the videos it receives uh, to the GPU threads and each GPU will have a local copy of all the models. So 
uh, we don't extract uh, frames and save them into disk. We directly load them into memory without extraction. And we have a fail safe system which uses like two different codecs, SAMPAC and OpenCV, just to make it fail safe. The most time consuming step is uh, pre processing where we have to resize the uh, video frames. So that's the bottleneck right now. And transient frames to GPU is actually memory intensive as well. So, what we do to resolve this is we uh, design a three stage buffering mechanism. So, we have one buffer for high resolution frames, the second buffer for low resolution frames, and a third buffer for huge subtotals. So, I will walk through this. So this, uh, this high resolution uh, buffer is uh, the frames which we are directly extracting from the video. We resize these uh, high resolution frames into low resolution frames which are uh, used by the localization network to detect the activity qubits. And we use the coordinates extracted from those qubits to crop the high resolution buffer frames to extract the activity qubits. And then these activity qubits are passed on, passed on to the action classifier to make the detections. And finally, these detections are passed to the CMAS algorithm, which performs post-processing for the final detection. So in terms of speed, uh, the system is pretty fast. It runs at around 100 frames per second. And the final, the best model we have right now, it performs a bit slower than this because we have ensemble of like different models, which makes it slow. And in terms of performance, uh, currently it's the best performing system on the leaderboard. Uh, NIST is going to present the results, so I will not talk about the numbers. But here I have a plot which shows how we have made progress over time. So we started working on this uh, problem in September 2019. We started with a score of 0.84 partial agency score, and currently we are at 0.36. Here we are showing some sample visualizations of the detection. So we can see that multiple activities are happening at the same time and all are being detected. So here we have like person interacting with another person. We have a breaker reversal. Then we have a right turn and a left turn. So we have another example here. So let me save this. So uh, what I want to show here is that that activity is happening too far away from the camera, it's pretty small. And even if there's occlusion, this pillar is like occluding the car, the bridge was consistent, and that's happening because we are uh, detecting at video level instead of frame level, so we don't have that issue of occlusion. There are some limitations uh, of this approach. So we have a two-stage approach, and we need connected components to extract the activity qubits. So the question is, can we merge these two stages together and get rid of this connected component? So what it will do is it will not only make the system more efficient, uh, it will also improve the performance because both extraction and detection, both extraction and classification will be performed at the same time. The other limitation is uh, if we have multiple instances of any activity happening close to each other, we'll have single uh, action activity qubit for those because we are not actually uh, separating different instances but we believe this can be easily done and we'll focus on this as well if you're interested in like more details we have archives paper on the system you can refer to this link and finally we'd like to thank like a number of groups which were of great help uh, during this progress. So first of all, I'd like to thank like all the groups which provided the, uh, provided the annotations, University of Maryland, Professor Raman group, which provided like the first set of annotations. Uh, Carnegie Mellon University, Professor Alex, who also provided like initial set of annotations uh, when we started working on this. Kitpair and then IBM. We would, we would like to thank uh, NIST for all the evaluation they have done. They were very responsive and they helped us a lot like in evaluating our system in time. And finally, I would like to thank IAPA for funding. Thank you. Hello, everyone. 
where the NF team from Language Technology Institute, Carnegie Mellon University. Our supervisor is Alexander Hauptmann. I'm Guolian Kang, and next I will present our team solution to the ActiV SDL task. First, I will give an overview about our system. Then I will introduce each module of our system. I will demonstrate the visualization and the quantitative results. Finally, I will give a summary of our system and put up some future directions to improve the performance further. In a word, the system we submitted can be classified into two groups. One is the object detection based system, and one is the event segmentation based system. All these systems consist of a proposal generation module and a classification module. For the proposal generation part, in the detection based system, we first detect the objects in the video frames. For example, the vehicles, the phone, the building, etc. Then we perform tracking on the detected objects using deep thought algorithm. After tracking, we could achieve person-based and vehicle-based proposals. For generating the person-vehicle interaction proposals, we develop several heuristic rules to merge the person-related proposal and the vehicle-related proposal. The issues with the detection-based system lie in two aspects. The first one is no object-level bounding boxes are available. The second one is the heuristic rules developed are hard to generalize to all the things. Thus, we propose to use a segmentation-based system, which is built upon the event-level bounding boxes or event-level masks, and we do not need to merge the person and vehicle proposals. The pipeline is simplified and more effective. Before reviewing the evaluation results, we want to discuss a dataset we used to train and test our model. Our training and test are based on the released KF1 dataset, which contains 257 annotated videos. To ease the evaluation of our model and the hyperparameter selection, we randomly split the KF1 dataset into a training set with 171 videos and a test set with 86 videos. We train our model on the training set and test the performance of performing hyperparameter selection on the test set. Comparing to the results on the leaderboard, we found that the trends of results on two test sets are similar. That is, the model performing well on our inner test set, also showing superior performance on the leaderboard, as shown in this table. The evaluation results also show that our segmentation-based system performs better than the detection-based system and we finally achieve 0 0.39 PAUDC with a speed at around 0 0.5 real-time. That is, for a 5 minutes video, the processing time is less than 2.5 minutes. The segmentation-based proposal generation module takes the video clip as input and outputs the binary mask of each frame, indicating where the event happens. We adopt an encoder-decoder architecture with lateral connections between corresponding encoding and decoding layers. 
In detail, the input of proposal generation module is a 8-frame video clip with temporal stride at 4. That is covering a 38-frame length. The output as discussed before is the binary mask of each frame in the input video clip. They indicate where the activities could happen. For the training, we randomly sample the clips from the four videos and perform a series of data augmentations to reduce the overfitting to the limited training data. As you may notice, in the civilian scenarios, the foreground activities may be sparse, either spatially or temporally. Thus, to train a successful segmentation model, we should deal with the data imbalance issue. The data imbalance comes from two aspects. One is the amount of positive clips that have activities are small. The second one is even if a frame contains foreground activities, the ratio of foreground pixels may be significantly small. Thus, we deal with the imbalance issue from two aspects. The first one is to increase the probability of sampling positive clips. And the next one is we choose to directly optimize the IOU along with the cross-entropy loss, rather than purely optimize with the cross-entropy loss in the training. Empirically, we found that these two solutions together contribute to, uh, to the final success. After generating the binary mask, we are able to know if and where an activity happens in a frame. However, we need to make classification for a proposal, which is consecutive bounding boxes of foreground activities. Thus, we perform linkage and other filtering operations to generate fairly good proposals to enable the subsequent classification. It consists of four steps. First, we use region growing algorithm to cluster the disconnected regions in each frame. Then, filtering the small regions which are not likely to contain an activity. After filtering, we link the regions across frames based on their special IOU. Note that we could also use the appearance features to perform the linkage. But empirically, with such a small temporal range, Special IOU just works reasonably well. And with special IOU as a linkage metric, the speed, the speed of the system is very fast. Finally, we filter the proposals whose temporal lines are too short to be foreground activities. For the classification, we perform multi-label classification rather than the multi-class classification due to the characters of generated proposals. We will show some visualization examples in the next part. The classifiers we have ever tried are the two R2 plus 1D architecture, which trained from the Instagram 65 million datasets and the temporal shift module. For the first one, it decouples a spatial convolution and a temporal convolution. For the temporal shift module, it replaces a 3D operation with a simple temporal shift operation, along with a subsequent convolution operation. The temporal information can also be effectively aggregated. This figure shows a comparison of PAUDC between these two classifiers. R2 plus 1D performs better than the TSM for all the activities, except for the person purchase and the person steals object activities. 
So in our final solution, we choose R2 plus 1D as our cast fair. Here we show the proposed visualization results on our KF1 test dataset. It can be seen that the bounding box may contain multiple activities. And that's why we use the multi-level class fair. From the bottom right example, we could see that the proposal generation module can also detect the fast moving and especially small radio activities. We also calculate the proportion of ground truth that is hit by proposals. As the minimum overlap increases, the number of hits of ground truth decreases, which is reasonable. A zero point minimum overlap may be enough for a class fair to detect the foreground activity. And we could see more than 70 a 0.75 ground truth can be covered, which implies a higher recall of our proposal generation module. Finally, we got 0.24 PUDC on our inner KF1 test set and 0.39 PUDC on the leaderboard. To summarize, we have developed two kinds of system and compared their performance. Our proposal generation module demonstrates a high recall of ground truth activities. We perform multi-label classification on the generated proposals based on the characters of the proposals. In future, we could try multi-level fusion strategy to further improve the performance of our system. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Chen from Oppo Research Institute. Today I will introduce some details about our software system. In this competition, MEVA dataset is used. The dataset involves both outdoor and indoor scenes. There are 37 activities to be detected, including person actions, vehicle movements, and person-vehicle interaction. Also, this dataset differs from another spatial temporal dataset, AVA. The person in AVA video is usually large because many videos are captured from movie or YouTube videos. In surveillance videos, person is small, so we need to design a totally new framework. This is our system pipeline. Detection and tracking are used to get person vehicle tracklet. Then we generate proposals by splitting the tracklet. We also generate PV proposal when person and vehicle gets near enough. We use video classification to classify the proposal. We design a special 3D convolution model. We also design a dynamic time warping solution to classify vehicle movements. At last, we need to post-processing our results. It involves class-wise merging, action mapping, and model ensemble. For detect and track module, CMU team open sourced their excellent work on GitHub. They got the first rank on ActivityNet 2019 leaderboard. We use that directly. We handle outdoor and indoor scene differently by applying different detection model. For outdoor camera, we use CMU V3 model, which is trained on viral dataset. For indoor camera, we use their Coco Pro-Train model. We split the cameras into two lists based on camera ID with prior knowledge. In proposal generation, we first generate the PV interaction proposal if the IOU between person and vehicle is positive for 32 frames. We call the origin tracklet the parent proposal. We then split parent to child clips with fixed length and stride. For video classification, 3D convolution is a straightforward solution. Here we use three different 3D convolution models to deal with person, vehicle, and PV interaction. According to our experimental result, we found it difficult for 3D convolution to learn the concept such as vehicle turn left, right, or U-turn. As a result, we also use DTW method for these vehicle movements. 
With the help of large-scale video datasets like Kinetics, 3D convolution is a hot topic. Backbones like i3D non-local slow-fast come up, and slow-fast is a state-of-the-art model in this area. Our model is a modified version of slow-fast. It has also two passes. One context pass with low frame rate. We don't use detection result to extract features for this pass to keep context. For many classes like hand interaction, talking, embrace, context is very important. Another change is that we consider the fast path as foreground path. We use multi-frame ROI align at the last feature map. It differs from the typical way which is widely used in AVA dataset. The reason is that the actions in AVA is atomic. The action duration is short and the person bounding box is relatively large. This means by using only the center detection results is enough for most cases in AVA. However, in MEVA, the person movements are obvious for many classes. For example, enter scene, exit scene, riding. The center detection cannot extract uh, accurate features in this situation. Another difference from AVA is that the raw resolution is large while the person is relatively small in MEVA dataset. Our solution is to crop context region according to a child proposal. We get the center frame bounding box. Based on the center point, we crop a square region with W and H that double the size of the maximum W and H for person bounding box. The fixed background can ensure the scene to be stable. The suitable background size can keep the interaction context while get rid of irrelevant noise. For PV interaction, there are two ways to get context region. One is vehicle-centered, another is person-centered. We use person-centered context region according to our experimental results. The training data is from our official release and contribute annotations. In addition with Virat version 1.0, we design three data augmentation strategies. First, random temporal crop near ground truth center frame for atomic actions. Secondly, ground truth splitting with fixed length and fixed stride for continuable actions, like talking, texting, writing. Thirdly, temporal reverse pair augmentation. For example, if we temporarily reverse open trunks, it becomes closed trunk. And if we reverse vehicle turn left, it becomes vehicle reverses. We split the data into train test with ratio 9 to 1. This is the test result for three tasks. We use mean average precision as the evaluation metric for video classification task. In vehicle task, we notice the poor performance in vehicle turn left vehicle turn right. That's why we use DTW method. We use an open source DTW library. We designed some curved templates with rotation and shape variants. We get the vehicle coordinate array in a child proposal and calculate the DTW distance between this array and all the templates. For example, for this array, we get different distance for four kinds of turning templates. We then apply a softmax function to the distance list to get the final score. A reciprocal operation is involved, and no training data is need needed for DTW. The final part is the result fusion. The first step is class-wise merging. For each parent proposal, we generate a new proposal if score is larger than a threshold, threshold new. We merge the nearby child proposals if score is larger than another threshold, threshold merged. Another step is action mapping. We have few training data for abandoned and theft, so we use the results of most relevant classes directly. There are also actions that are is not atomic at all. For example, vehicle drop off person and vehicle picks up person. The ground truth is always 10 to 20 seconds. We use the combination of atomic actions to deal with this difficulty. We use a temporal IOU to limit maximum temporal distance for the two atomic actions and another spatial IOU between the vehicle bounding box that ensure the actions happen based on the same vehicle. The score is the average of the two atomic actions. We use ensemble strategy for 3D convolution. 
input resolution, complex region size, and horizontal flip status are different for different models. In fast mode, only model 1 is used. We use MEVA and UMD test as pipeline test dataset. MEVA dataset overlaps with video classification training data. As a result, the performance is better. UMD test overlaps with no training data. The result on this set is close to the result on leaderboard. This is the final system pipeline results on SDR leaderboard. We submitted two versions. One is full version with ensemble models and 5 FPS for detection. Another is a fast version with lower FPS and no model ensemble. The processing time is much less for fast mode. The performance is near. Okay, that's all for the introduction. Thanks for listening.